Hello everyone, welcome to the North Quincy High School Gymnasium, where tonight we're gonna see the Quincy Presidents take on the North Quincy Red Raiders. My name is Jonathan Clary, being joined by Jim Timmons. And Jim, both teams here ready to come out firing here for this big game for cross Tine rivals. Yeah, they've had uh, both teams kind of off to a slow start, John. And uh, I think as a result, this is the type of game that could be really important. It could ignite a season for one of them. So should be interesting to see what happens here as the Red Raiders and President square off. All right, well, we're getting ready to announce the starting lineups. So we'll go down to our PA announcer for the starting lineups. job by Kaylee McKean there on the National Anthem, John. Um, although this is bad form, we may just suggest to the truck that we're having trouble with the audio here. Um, I hope we're all queued up properly. 
All right, well, real quick, what we'll do is we'll run down these starting lineups first for the visitors from Quincy High School. Number 11, senior and co-captain Doug Scott. We'll mention more about him in this moment. Number 12, sophomore Brian Malger. Number 15, senior Anthony Raditz. Number 31, sophomore Seth Pullum. And number 33, co-captain senior John Parry. For the Red Raiders, number 21, senior Jonathan Coates. Number five, freshman Matt Costa. Number 23, junior Terrence Staley. Number 24, senior captain Tim Stilley. And number 33, junior Mike Stanton. I uh, mentioned, Jim, that we we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, Doug Scott. We know how great a player Doug Scott is. Well, the other day, Doug Scott became the all-time leading scorer at Quincy, boys or girls, with 1,355 career points. And they honored him before the game, honored, giving him the game ball, which he scored that point against Hingham on January 7th. That was a nice little ceremony. And the question tonight's gonna be, can North Quincy stop number 11? If they can, they can compete, but if not, then expect Quincy to have a nice outing here in the north end of the city. See I, a freshman over there, Matty Costa, running the point for Quincy, uh, North Quincy, John. This is his first start in a pressure situation. All right, Stan has the ball over now to Costa. He's going to drive in. Off-balance shot is no good. Fight for the rebound. Coach comes up with it for North, and he can't get it to fall. Stilly with the rebound. In traffic, still a fight for the loose ball, and John Perry comes away with it for Quincy. Nice rebound by Perry, really competing in traffic. Perry's gonna shoot a long three, no good, off the front of the rim. Well, you see the North strategy there. They had Terrence Staley out on Doug Scott. This one's gonna be a charge, I believe, on Costa. Yeah, Costa gets called for the charge. John Perry was in there to take that charge. Scott has it over now to John Parry. And Scott drives in, and he's gonna get called for a travel. Yeah, Staley is all over Scott. Wherever he goes, he's on him. Now Quincy comes out with its own little man-to-man -man full court pressure, it looks like. All right, Staley gets it into Coates. It's off now to Matt Costa, again the freshman running the point for the Raiders, running against senior Doug Scott. And Scott knocks it out of bounds. He's gonna go off him and remain North Ball. Yeah, Costa doing an impressive job of handling the pressure, John. Still he gets it in, he's gonna drive in, and it is no good off, see he's gonna go off Mike Stanton from North, the Quincy Ball. Been a couple of out of control penetrations by the Red Raiders. You can tell that the coaching staff wants them to take the ball to the hoop against Quincy, but they've got to do it a little more under control. Brian Malger had the ball for Quincy, gives it off now to Scott. Scott working against Staley, drives in, hits oh, nice off to Anthony dish. Raditz, and nice draw there. Raditz puts Quincy on the board first. Nice dish by Doug Scott. Costa comes right down. And it's going to be no good. Rebounded by Raditz. Scott's going to shoot the long three. No good. A little too much on it. Goss is going to slow things down a little bit now. Over to Staley. Tim Staley has it. Back up now to Costa. 10 on the shot clock. Coates is going to shoot a three, and it is good. Jonathan Coates, a big three point. Gives North Quincy the lead early. Nice patience by North on that time down the court, John, as opposed to the prior kind of wild penetration. So good job. Nice job by Stanton on the boards. Quincy continuing with its man-to-man -man pressure, John. They've got Doug Scott. Kind Jonathan. of roaming. He's sagging off in the middle very well. We've got one and a foul on number 15 for Quincy, Anthony Raditz. That's his first. And going to the line for North is going to be Mr. Coates. All 
Right, first one for Coates is good. Nice shot from Frank Tansy over in our corner camera. John Coates who sticks two and the Red Raiders with a 5-2 lead. There you saw the matchup that's going to tell the tale of this game. Scott and Staley. Staley did a nice job recovering, gets over to Scott, drives in though, and he's going to draw the foul. Nice job by Doug. He's a senior, and he has seen it all, John. He knows how to deal with this type of pressure. Did a nice job of penetrating from the wing. Foul was called on number 24 for North Quincy, Tim Stilley. Scott's first attempt is no good. Yeah, Doug's got to, once he gets going, gets his mojo going, watch out. But he missed a three and he missed a foul shot. He's trying to get in the rhythm here. But it will happen, I can assure you. Stilley's trying to go coast to coast and cannot lost handle the ball. Mike Stanton underneath and nice reverse layup, put it in for two. Yeah, nice job by Mike. Very athletic. He got the rebound on the Stilly miss. Put it up with a left handed reverse, as you said, Sean. John Perry brought the ball up, gives it off now to Scott. Scott drives in, jumper from the foul line, goes in and out and back in again. Curious thing, an interesting thing about Scott offensively is he's out there alone, no picks or anything. We've seen premier players like Doug Scott before, but normally they'll have a couple of picks set for them. This kid does it all on his own, and it's really phenomenal. Costa gives it off now to Stanton. 10 on the shot clock. Costa doesn't realize how much time. Five on the shot clock now, off to Staley. And ball's nice loose, steal. and Doug Scott comes up with it. Trying to look for traffic behind him, and he puts it in for two. We're tied here at 7-7, early on. Costa running the offense for North, calling out the play. Scott comes up to challenge, over now to Staley. And loose ball, and it's gonna go. They're gonna call it on Stanton, I believe. What's the call, let's see. Did not see who the foul was called on. And we're going to have a timeout called on the floor. So 3.34 left to go in the first quarter. Fast-paced action here at the gym, tied at 7. I think North called a timeout is what happened there. They got a timeout. It was not a foul. Um, Coach Barrett a little unhappy with what they're doing offensively, John, as we said. One time down there, they worked the ball well around the perimeter. They turned over a nice shot. Uh, Coach hit a three-pointer. Uh, but generally they've been impatient offensively and I think that's the point of this timeout. Just to calm the boys down a little. Very, very impressed by Matt Costa and how he's handled the man-to-man uh, -man pressure of Quincy High School. Quincy on the other end did a nice job of calming things down offensively. They've been very, very aggressive on the defensive end as is their hallmark. Came out a little slow offensively but Doug Scott seemed to have got on track. He's got five, and uh, Quincy is tied here with North 7-7 with 3.30 to go in the quarter. A couple subs check in for Quincy High School. Reggie Caesar checks in, and also checking in for the presidents is number three, Adusi, Adusi Kusi. Better movement here by North Quincy coming out of the timeout. Three-point shot there by Mike Stanton is good. And again, they get a nice look for a three. Scott right around Staley. Oh, wow. Doug Scott could not be stopped there on that drive, Jim. Went all the way, zigging, zagging around to get that basket in. Kusi was trying to steal the ball from behind from Costa, and it's no good. He said we're going to get a foul called on Caesar for the Presidents. Costa with it over now to Coates. Defense! 
Over to Stanton, and he fakes it's going to go baseline. Nice, nice pass to Tim kid. Stilley. And we're going to get a foul called as well. Tim Stilley trying to make it a three point play. Great dish by Stanton. A dribble penetration along the baseline. Gave it to Stilley, who put it in off the glass. We're here at North Quincy, the plastic glass there. And um, the forgiving backboard resulted in a nice, clean finish by Tim Stilley. And as you said, he's got to look at an old fashioned three, and he makes it. So. North Quincy with the finish on the three, and they lead 13-9 here in a fast-moving first quarter, John. Foul's called on Reggie Caesar. He picks up two quickly. Doug Scott, a long three, no good. Picked up the rebound there by Terrence Staley. Foster finds Stan, and he saved it. Coach Dave Perry says it went out of bounds right in front of the Quincy bench. It looked like it might have, but hard to tell from our angle. Ooh, and we're going to have a push off there, there by yeah. Staley. I think and we all saw that one. Nice shot there by Aduse Kusi. Come in and draw that foul. And she did Staley with a little push off with the forearm. Yeah, Kusi did a great job there of putting intense pressure to the point that he frustrated the ball handler. So. Scott kicks it off for Raditz. And he cannot control. Costa, great move there. And great job there coming from behind the play with number 25, Caesar, for the presence. Knocked that ball out of bounds. Matt Cost was trying to make a highlight reel play right there, but it goes out of bounds. Yeah, we're talking about a freshman here. Very, very impressive stuff. Staying wide open from the wing, and he's going to drain it. Seven points quickly for Mike Stanton here in the first quarter. 15 to 9 lead for the Raiders. Doug Scott drives in, and he's going to put it in as well. And Scott answers with his ninth point. And when Scott heats up from the perimeter, it's really going to get interesting, let me tell you. Pass was oh, Aaron for... Aaron Pass, good look. Went through the hands of Jonathan Coates. He saw the wide open rim, was looking at the rim, and this ball went through his hands. Got 125 to go, 15-11, Red Raiders. Here comes Doug Scott. Scott, nice pass off to Raditz, and he finishes it off. Anthony Raditz, four points here early on in the first quarter. 15-13, North on top. The focus on Scott created that opportunity, John. Red Raiders nice. is focusing heavily on Doug Scott there. Nice hustle by Reggie Caesar on that play. Two plays there, he's hustled back down court to break up the plays. Coates wide open, shoots the three, no good. And two Quincy players ran into each other for the rebound. Mike Stanton's going to finish it up. Nice job by Stanton. He's got nine here. He's leading the way for the Red Raiders. Scott working against Staley still. 50 seconds left to go in the quarter. Parry shoots a three from the corner, no good. Fight for the rebound. Stanton has it, and they're going to call a jump off. And it'll be Quincy Ball with 27 seconds on the shot clock. Dougie Scott just did a great job of just walking Terrence Staley down and creating an opportunity for himself. He's so smart. Raditz, nice entry pass, and it's going to get blocked there by Costa, goes up and blocks it. Yeah, Costa went up with a left hand and blocked that one. Matty Costa, only a freshman, but showing tremendous athleticism, and he is just completely undaunted out there. Long three for Doug Scott, cannot get it to fall. Fight for the rebound, and Caesar comes up with it. And a great hustle play there by Costa, takes the ball away. Stanton looks up for Coates. Oh. Slight little up fake, can't get it to fall. John Perry dives on the floor to create the jump ball, and it'll be North Ball. We've got 21 seconds left on the clock. A little back and forth there, exciting action. Costa really showing some athleticism out there. I'll tell you, very impressive stuff. Got a layup inside, finished by Stilly. Great pass by Staley. He was very patient on the inbounds. They got it to Stilly. He got pushed down low as he went up. 
And he's got another shot at an old fashioned three. Foul called on Caesar, and as you said, Stilly will go to the line to try to convert the three point play, and he does. That's two three-point plays for Stilly. He's got six, and we're ticking down to 15 seconds in this first quarter. Scott drives in, and we'll have a foul called on the floor. As you know, they're going to give it a shooting foul. Shots. A little continuation there on the call. It's like Staley gets called for the foul. That's his second. Nice look at the rim there as Doug Scott's first foul shot went through. Scott's got 10 here in this first quarter. Coach Barrett gets Stanton out for a little break. He had a very productive first quarter as well. That time down, Doug Scott two for two. He's got 11 in the first quarter. R.J. Barden in for Stanton with 10 seconds left in the quarter. Coates, pull up jumper, no good. Loose ball, and it's going to get tipped out of bounds over there for Quincy with Seth Pullum, who's checked into the ball game. 5.6 seconds, plenty of time here for the Presidents to get a good look. Scott has the ball, gets over half court, three seconds to go, shoots the three pointer, and he drains it, and that's going to be the end of the quarter. And an impressive end it was, John. Dougie Scott from way downtown. Bangs home a three-pointer. He ends up finishing the quarter with 16. Anthony Raddatz has four, and that's the story for, for Rock Quincy. Uh, I beg your pardon, 14, and Raddatz has four. And uh, Quincy's got 18. On the North Quincy side, very productive quarter for Mike Stanton. He was good down low, plus he stuck a three. Tim Silly with a few old-fashioned threes, and John Cokes as well with a three-pointer. And we've got a 20 to 18 first quarter. High scoring, high flying quarter here. Starting out. Got a shot of the crowd here, John. Uh, it's a very impressive collection tonight. The North Gym is absolutely packed. You see the Quincy bench, a lot of folks over there behind the Quincy bench. As we get a shot of the left baseline there, uh, there's a, a bunch of uh, seats under the hoop here, and it's really a nice high school environment tonight at North Quincy's gymnasium. There you see the score, 20 to 18. Little bit of a surprise, John. I thought Quincy might have the edge in this game. So far, they have not, Jim. <laughs> thought you were Coming off guard, guard yeah, I was looking yeah. down my paper real quick. I uh, will tell you, I do give tribute to the coaching staff at Quincy, and I think we should. Dave Perry, Jim Quigley, Roger McCary, and then there's a host of volunteer assistants. Kevin O'Connell, Matt Ramponi, Mike Quigley, Andy Myers, and Bob Euler. This program was left in terrible straits when in late October their coach left, uh, left at a point in time when Quincy didn't have a lot of options. Caught everyone a bit by surprise as well. And uh, the program was really, really in a tough situation. Coach Perry has stepped in and done a terrific job of leading the boys, keeping the team together. And uh, the boys and this coaching staff deserve a lot of pressure after the hand they were dealt there late in the game. So I really give them tribute for that. Deserve a lot of respect for how they've handled things this season, John. Right, so Quincy will start the second quarter with the ball. 2018's our score. Scott shoots another three, and that goes in and out, no good. It was halfway down and it rolled out. Rebound by Tim Stilley. Yeah, in traffic, very physical and aggressive, the rebounding, I'll tell you. We don't have a lot of big guys out here, John. They're gonna play the game, it looks like, at about 6-3 or under. But I'll tell you what, they are out there banging and being really aggressive. Coach is gonna pick that one up. That's a rebounding foul on Coates going over the back. All right, Scott brings the ball up now for the Presidents. And Terrence Staley's going to get called for the foul. Again, John, I want to emphasize, 
I'm dating myself, but back when I was in high school, there was a, an athlete at Catholic Memorial, Ron Perry, who was a premier guard, much like Doug Scott. But what CM did to free Perry up was they set a wall of picks for him. Scott does all of this on his own, off the dribble a lot, off the first step. He's just a really exceptional and marvelous high school ball player. It's great to watch him play here and perform. Look at that little between the legs dribble to free himself up. Nice rebound by Seth Pullum, and he puts it up for two. Again, an opportunity created by Scott. All the focus on him. Pullum did a nice job of going back door and cleaning the boards. Stay in turnaround jumper, no good. Scott with the rebound. He's going to push the action now. Tough shot from the corner and it is no good. Staying with the rebound. He's going to push it now. John Perry's back. And we're going to have a charge call. Nice great, excuse me, a nice job there by John Perry. And Mike Stanton will get called for the charge. Great job by Perry is stepping in. I guess they're going to wipe the hoop off there. Thought they might have been able to give Stanton the hoop, but great decision by Perry. And he stepped in to a big guy. Uh, or stepped in front of a big guy, Mike Stanton. Right, Quincy's so. going to call a timeout. We are tied at 20 with 6.39 left to go here in the first half. Quincy's in the bonus foul-wise. That may be why Perry has uh, taken the timeout here. Just to emphasize, let's take the ball to the hoop a little more. Last few times down, Dougie Scott with a couple of pull-up jumpers. Not necessarily what Perry might want to see. I think he wants to see some penetration. Take advantage of the fact that every time they're fouled now, they're going to get to the foul line. So I'm sure that Coach Perry just reminding the boys of that, and we'll see the adjustment after this timeout. And Perry with the ball. Larry Liuzzo and R.J. Barden have come in for North Quincy. Scott, a fall away jumper is no good, but he's going to get called. He'll pick up the foul. It's going to be called on R.J. Barden. Yeah, the Red Raiders have to watch it here. The last couple of foul calls, they've had a lot to say to the officials after the call's been made, and that's just not a productive direction to go in. Call was made. They've got to uh, move on from it. Scott buries the first. Nice little cut to the Tansy camera there. Frank doing a great job down in the corner. And you see the backspin when we do go to the Tansy shot. Doug Scott, just a great ball player. Oh, you'd have to be eagle-eyed to see the backspin, actually. <laughs> we'll have to get our super slow-mo out on for that yeah. shot there. But. Right. A little bit easier to see Darty down here. In the truck instead of up on the camera, I'm sure we get that. <laughs> All right, so Quinta takes the lead, 22 to 20. That time, Costa penetrated a little bit, and that helped open things up. Stilly with a nice rebound and put back, but that time, Matty Costa penetrated a little and made the guards cover him, and that opened up the two wings, creating that scoring opportunity. Good job by Matt Costa. Doug Scott drives baseline, kicks it off to Seth Pullum, but still he is there to break it up. He comes away with it now. Stilly over to Terrence Staley. He goes baseline, kicks it off now for Barden. Barden couldn't control. Nice job there by Terrence Staley to go up and put it in for two. His first two points here tonight. Yeah, nice job by Staley. Right back comes Quincy. There he is, the man, the myth, Doug Scott. Douglas is not going to let this score get away from the Presidents, I'll tell you that. They get it low to Larry Liuzzo. R.J. Barden comes flying through. North Quincy banging low here. Substitution now for Quincy coming in is number 20, Andrew Papil. And R.J. Barnes going to get called for a push shot before the ball came in. Excuse me. Is that called on 24 or I number think, four? Yeah, they got Stilly with that one. R.J. was complaining, but they got Stilly with the call. Okay. 
Parry going baseline. And shot there by Papil is no good. Fight for the rebound. And looks like Luzzo and Staley went up and bumped each other. And it goes into the hands of Quincy High School's. Nice hustle by Quincy's uh, number 40. A guy who, for whatever reason, we don't have his name, which is regrettable because out there banging away. Nice hustle. And we're sorry that he's going to remain nameless here. And Doug Scott oh, comes Doug away Scott. with a steal. He shoots the three, and it almost went in. He's going to get a foul call. It was going to be a four-point play. Matty Costa stepped in after the shot. Matt thought he was boxing out. The official called him for stepping into the player and kind of breaking the plane. So Scott's going to go to the line now and have three. Sticks the first. One thing Coach Barrett has to do is get on his players here. They've got to stop talking to the officials. Now everyone in a white shirt has an editorial comment when the whistle blows. And that's not the direction you want to go here. Um, while I don't know his name, I know that the official who's got the ball now under the hoop, who's Barber, I'd love to know. I'd love to get one of those haircuts. But he's a well-experienced official. He does all the assignments for the South Shore. Handles it all for the Patriot League. He's the guy. And you don't want him talking about the fact that the Red Raiders were a yappy group. They should quiet down and play the game here. Scott hits all three, John, and Quincy's got a three-point lead. Still he hands it off. Biden from the baseline. He's going to drain that shot. His first two points of the night, 27-26. Playing a little basketball. That's good to see. Nice job by Stilly and Barden. Long three now, and it is good. Doug Scott. He's never been afraid to take a shot from anywhere in the court. All right, that's correct. They came out with some really stiff pressure on him, but I'll tell you, they can't let him go like that. Went for the NBA range three-pointer, and he stuck it. R.J. Barden comes back, and another baseline jumper for him. Nice job by R.J., providing a little spark here to the Red Raider offense. Quincy with a 30-28 lead. Scott faked the three, couldn't get Costa to bite. Parry's gonna shoot the three now, off the back of the rim. And fight for the rebound. Let's see who they're gonna give the ball to. And it looks like it's gonna be North Ball. Well, I'm sure Coach Parry doesn't mind seeing Doug launching him, but he doesn't want to get in a game of launches here, for sure. They get the call on number 40 for Quincy. He, will, he who will remain nameless. He grabbed Matty Coster off the break here on the inbounds. Quincy coming out with some aggressive man-to-man -man full court pressure. 351 left to go in the second quarter. Quincy on top by two. Quincy trying to double team Costa. He's able to break free, get it just off to Coates from the baseline, and it is no good. And coming up with a rebound is Scott. Scott going coast to coast and puts it in for two. It's really remarkable, John. I mean, he's just a high school kid like all the young men out on the floor here, but when you see the things he does, that was phenomenal. He just took it right to Tim Stilly. He didn't hesitate at all. 26 points for Doug Scott. We have three minutes to go in the half. Nice entry pass down to R.J. Barden. He's gonna go up and in. R.J. Barden on a little bit of a run himself right now with six points. Love to see it. R.J. has quieted down. He's letting his offense and his defense do his talking here. And he's had the last six for the Red Raiders. Scott with a launch, no good. And fight for the rebound, and it's gonna be a jump ball. Great job there by Coates and Red. It's to try to hang on to that. And possession arrow is gonna favor the Presidents. Luke McDonough coming in for the Presidents. Luke is one of the stars of the Babe Ruth World Series this year. He was the pitcher when uh, Quincy beat, was it, it was Long Beach, right? Or who uh, was it, Florida? Uh, Tallahassee, I believe. Well, whatever. I knew it was within the United States, one of the teams. 
<laughs> so nice job, Lucas. I guess you got a one in fifty chance for yeah. which state it came <laughs> from. So nice move by Stilly. Stilly put the brakes on quickly on a dribble penetration there. Got the crowd all excited, but then there was a turnover, so came up empty. It's 32-30, Presidents, with 2.20 to go here. Very electric atmosphere in the gym, John. Scott working off the screen. He's going to shoot the three. Off the front of the rim. Costa with the rebound. Scott trying to get back, playing some D. Trying to go up for the steal. It's no good. Costa went for a behind-the-back shot, but R.J. Barden comes up to finish it off. Barden, eight points all late in the second quarter. Yeah, big boost for the Red Raiders. Anthony Raddatz from the corner to shoot the three. That's no good. Liuzzo with the rebound. Nice job by Liuzzo, rebounding the same man as still he has. Really tough and physical in traffic. Loose ball on the floor, fight for it. Costa trying to come up with it, and he's able to save it. Shot there is no good. Barden with another rebound. Up and in. R.J. Barden. R.J. Barden. R.J. Barden coming back and giving the Red Raiders the lead. 34 to 32. A spark off the bench. Barden has been. Oh, nice look down low for Raddatz. Nice Scott. What a pass by Douglas Scott. He put the brakes on. Saw Raddatz down low. And again, the focus on Scott creates an opportunity. And he hits the open man for an easy layup. Great job. Costa loses his dribble. Barden feeling it, puts it up and in. RJ Barden, 12 points. I and think RJ should get out and buy a lottery ticket right now. <laughs> You're right, he is feeling He's it. He's trying to match Doug Scott right now in the second quarter. <laughs> Scott kicks it off. McDonough puts it up and he puts it in for two as well. Luke McDonough, two points. Back and forth we are, tied at 36. What a ball game here at the North Quincy Gym. Stilly kicks it off now, Barden puts it up again, and he finally misses, no good. Doug Scott with the rebound, and Liuzzo is gonna go up with a foul. Actually not a bad foul by Larry Liuzzo. I know he was simply falling to the ground and didn't intend anything, but the outcome was a good one because Doug Scott was about to Head flying, although actually they're sending. Um, What's well, going on? Double penalty yeah, he's now. Have two. Doug will be shooting two, so. I don't have room in my scorebook anymore for the <laughs> first half entries for Doug Scott. Got a little question over at the scorer's table. They're going to check uh, team totals, I believe. Mike Stanton at the table looking to get in on this final time down. A good substitution by Barrett. What he's trying to do is give Stanton, an offensive guy, an opportunity to get in here and make something happen in what will probably be North's last possession of the half. All right, so Doug Scott going to the line for two. Quincy is in the double bonus. Doug buries it. As we said early on, he missed a foul shot. He missed a couple of threes. I said, once he gets calibrated, it's all over. It's really remarkable to watch what he does. He's now uh, six for six in the second half. And that goes to seven for seven in the second half here from the foul line. He's hit 10 of his 11 foul shots. And he has 28 points all in the first half. Barrett tells Costa to take the air out of the ball a little bit. 30-second clock is off. Norris got 15 seconds left in the quarter. Still he has, still he has it over up now to Costa. Costa's going to shoot the three, and it's good. Nice job by Matt. Doug Scott coming up quickly. He's going to shoot a three himself off the glass. No good. Quincy was trying to get the pull off for the rebound. Coming down with the rebound for Quincy was Seth Pullum. And he went up, and it was no good, and that will be the end of the half. Looked like Quincy was looking for a foul on the shot there by Pullum, but they will not get it. However, with that big shot there by Costa, gives North Quincy the lead 39-38, and what a half it's been, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. It's just been remarkable watching these two teams go at each other. Um, 
Doug Scott, the big story for Quincy. He had, uh, let's see, I gotta do my, my uh, math here. He had four field goals and a three pointer. That's 11, 12, 13. He had 14 points in the first quarter. Followed that up in the second quarter with three, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So he's got 28 at the half of the uh, 38 Quincy points. Really remarkable Ladies performance by a high school player here in North Quincy gym. Anthony Raditz had six, Seth Pullum two, and Lucas McDonough two to balance out or complete the scoring, I should say, for Quincy. Go ahead on the north side, John. Yeah, leading the way was RJ Barton coming off the bench. And he was on fire in the second quarter. He got 12 points, all, again, all in that second quarter. Mike Stanton has nine. Tim Stilley has eight. Jonathan Coates has five. Matt Costa, three. And Terrence Staley, two. So again, at the half, North with a one-point lead, 39 to 38. Jim and I will take a quick break, and we'll be back after a short timeout. All right, welcome back everyone to the North Quincy Gym. We're at the half. North leads the Presidents by a score of 39 to 38. Story of the game so far. A couple players on each team that have been standing out. For Quincy, Doug Scott has 28 points, four assists and two rebounds. RJ Barden came off the bench, had a big spark for himself with 12 points to keep North Quincy in the ball game. She also mentioned for Quincy, John Perry has six assists. Over on north side, Tim Stilley, along with eight points, has five boards and three assists. Mike Stanton, nine points, five rebounds. North Quincy has a total of eight rebounds. Quincy with 12. Tell you, a uh, young man coming over to get the ball here, number five, you see him in the middle of the screen. Really impressive, freshman Matt Coster. He's been under intense pressure all game. You see number 40 stepping up on him. Barry Welch was good enough to help us at the half. That's Robbie Bina. Scott comes up behind and strips Costa, John. And a nice simple lay in there. Little bunny shot there. Doug Scott, his 30th point here tonight, gives North, excuse me, gives Quincy the lead. And that's gonna come right at us, out of bounds. And it'll be Quincy ball. Scott working against Costa. Kicks it off to Perry. Open for three, he shoots it. Off the back rim, no good. Fight for the rebound, Stanton comes up with it for North. Nice quick outlook to Stilly John. A good release by Stanton and results in that little layup by Stilly. That was a great outlet by Mike Stanton creating that opportunity. Scott going baseline, kicks it off. Finds Bina open and he hits it and he gets fouled. We'll see if that's gonna be a three point play or a two. I think it's two. And they called the foul on Staley. All right, that was a two point shot for Bina. Staley picks up his third foul. And Bina drains it for the three point play to give Quincy a two point lead. Stilly drives into the paint and puts it in. Nice Tim, Stilly. By Tim Stilly. Four quick points to begin this third quarter. Scott with the ball, top of the key. Shoots a long three. That one's a little short, no good. Mike Stanton with the rebound. Gets it quickly up now to Stilly. And Doug Scott trying to come up with a steal, cannot. But John Parry does. He's gonna lead the break. He's gonna go coast to coast. But we're gonna have a foul called. And it's gonna be called on oh, Stilly. No, Stilly. I'm not too sure if I agree with that one, Jim. Look like Stilly had position on that, but. 
Yeah, I think what they were saying, I think Perry made a little effort to get around him and that Stilly may have leaned in. That's at least the basis of the call. That's Stilly's third. So Stilly and Staley both with three. Be an interesting law firm, Stilly and Staley. <laughs> Doug Scott open for three and he oh. hits it from the corner. You know, you can tell by Douglas's reactions that he enjoys what's going on as much as anyone out there. He has a lot of fun playing basketball. Bina with a steal, couldn't convert it. North back the other way. All right, Jonathan Coates comes up with the ball and it is almost taken away by Papil, who checked in for Quincy. Foster launches a three, that's no good. Scott comes up with the board. He's gonna pull up from the foul line around the rim and in. And foul's gonna be called on Bina on the block. Bina playing very aggressively on defense here. He's really making Costa work. Costa's physical conditioning is exceptional, John. He's been out there working both ends of the floor, defensively and offensively, and um, he's been under intense pressure offensively, but has handled it very well. So, good job by the young freshman. We're seeing some excellent individual efforts out here. We really are, it's quite a ball game. Quincy coming out of the locker room, and they've uh, stretched their lead to five here, 48-43. North Quincy calls a timeout, as you said, Falling behind by five points. Coach Kevin Barrett calling time to regroup his troops. Get them back into the game. She also mentioned uh, before this game, this is a second game of the doubleheader. And in the opening game, the North Quincy girls came out with a victory over the Quincy girls by a score of 62 to 40. North Quincy girls improving their record now to seven and one, four and one in the Patriot League. I believe they are in first place in the Patriot League. So North Quincy girls having a nice season so far. Yeah, yeah, very competitive Patriot League. And uh, North is up at the top with Rockland. Also another little announcement item, Saturday, January 17th, North Quincy High School is gonna co uh, host rather an alumni basketball game. It's from six to eight at the North Gym. If you've still got it, as they say, then come on down. And we don't mean coronary artery disease. They're looking, <laughs> got a lot of ball players out here. They're looking to fill the gym up and there'll be a little reception after at Malachy's. A nice spot run by the Higgins family. Some esteemed North Quincy alums. So it's an outing for North Quincy basketball alumni Saturday, January 17th, beginning at six here at the gym following up after it, Malachis. And Terry Staley with the ball, working against Doug Scott. Gets over to Coates. And foul's gonna be called away from the ball. Looks like it's gonna be called against Mike Stanton, number 33 for the Raiders. Yeah, Stanton is frustrated by the pressure, and what happened is he reacts by pushing off a bit. So right now, North feeling very victimized by the officiating. Coach Barrett speaking to the official, that's acceptable, but happy to see the players aren't reacting. Doug Scott, another long three, and can't get this one to fall. Fight nice for the rebound. rebound, Stanton comes up with it. Nice job by Stanton in traffic. Very physical rebound there, good job. Stilly and taken away by Scott. Trying to drive to the hole for two, and he does. And Costa was trying to do a fancy dribble around B and it cannot. And coming from behind was Coates to take it away from Scott. Andy Ng into the ball game for the first time for North Quincy. And we're gonna foul down on the floor. Yeah, nice job by Ng on the dish off there. He's trying to calm things down with a good dribble penetration. Dish off down low. 
a frustrated Mike Stanton heads to the bench. Coach Barrett wants to talk to him for a moment, trying to get him to calm down a bit. Coates from the baseline three and it is no good. Scott with the rebound. Pushing in quickly up now for the Presidents and big block there by Coates from the weak side. Ing comes up with it. And he was trying to dish it off for Coates, but nice job there by Anthony Rass to knock it out of bounds. Yeah, you're right about Coates. Great defensive play on Scott. You knew Scott was going to penetrate, and he did. Coates came over from the backside, made the block. So North Quincy's got to calm things down here and get some hoops. Quincy's stretched the lead out to seven and really taking control here. This is an important juncture in the game for the Red Raiders. Conversely, there you see Doug Scott, senior leader, Knows what a critical point in the game it is for the Presidents. They've got the lead at seven. Love to stretch it up to about 10. Try to dishearten the Red Raiders. Scott calming things down now. There's 10 on the shot clock. Scott went back to the half court. Actually looked at the shot clock. Shot put up there by Caesar. Who checked into the game is no good. Bardner rebound in traffic. and gets it to Coster. Walks it up. Should mention on the last defensive effort by Quincy. Number 20, Andrew Papil was down on the floor and was able to pick up the rebound from the floor and led the break for the Presidents. Caesar picks up a reach. Coach Perry gets him out. He's telling him to use his legs more defensively. Critical juncture in the game. Quincy stretched the lead to seven. Both teams, Quincy trying to establish control here. North trying to fight back and get in this game, John. I do say Kusi has checked in now for the Presidents. Aang trying to get it into Byron and cannot. Costa comes up with it, puts it up, and no good. Radis goes up high for the rebound. Scott comes up, shoots the threes from straight away. No good. Long rebound goes up to Stilly. Stilly driving to the hole, puts it up. A little circus shot there, can't get it to fall. Papil comes up with it, up now to Scott. Trying to drive in, and he's going to draw the foul on Andy Ng. Great outlet pass there to Scott. Scott ended up on Catherine O'Connell's lap, who's under the hoop there. The North Quincy girls are under the basket, and uh, Douglas got driven hard to the floor. He's going to go to the line and shoot two. Seven-point lead for the Presidents, 50-43, to 43, with 3.11 left to go in the third quarter. Doug Scott at the line to shoot two. Who'd they get on that one, Sean? Uh, Ng. Okay. <laughs> Doug's starting to show a little, you know, some signs of wear and tear here. He's kind of cooled off in the third quarter. I think he's a little bit tired. Probably see him re-energize if he can catch a break here as we approach the fourth quarter. Yeah, he's cooled off. He only has 11 points so far in this quarter. Right. He sticks them both. I can detect, though, a little bit of a... Uh, yeah, he's been doing shift. a lot of work, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Mentioned 11 points. Doug Scott has now 39 points in the ballgame. Mike Stanton was trying to get it down low, taken away by Rads. Great defense there by the Presidents. That's correct. Quincy's got the lead at nine now. Scott's going to slow it down, set up the offense. 15 on the shot clock, 2.30 on the game clock. Gets over to Parry in the corner. Finds Papil wide open on the block. He turns and shoots, and it is good. Nice look inside there, and a good finish by Papil. Papil established position, got the ball from Parry on a nice pass. Took a little fall away, and Quincy's got the first double-digit lead in this ball game. It's at 11. John Perry has eight assists now on the night. Biden drives in. He gets pushed from, excuse me, trips over someone. And a foul is called. I think they're going to get Perry. I'm going to give that one to Perry. Yeah, they I haven't that's announced what they... it and they haven't put it up on the board. Barney gets in to Costa. Costa's shot is no good. Rebound by Stanton, who's in. He can't get it to fall as well. Coates comes up with it. Turn around jumper for him. That's no good. Still fighting for the rebound. And did you say Kusi finally comes up with it for the Presidents? 
Doug Scott driving in, backs off now. 1.45 left to go in the quarter. Kusi wide open, he's gonna shoot the three, that's no good, still he with another rebound for the Raiders. North should slow it down here, they do not have numbers. Great hustle there by Papil and Kusi for the Presidents, over Cost comes up with it. Raiders got a break there, they reset the shot clock as well. Good decision by Stilly to slow things down. Yeah, good call. Well, no, it's a timeout. Yeah, timeout call. Tell you, Matt Costa had his shirt pulled out of the pants on one occasion, and I heard a slap there, even though I have headphones on and bad hearing, but he cannot get a call. Matt, a young freshman, terribly frustrated. See Coach Barrett is as well. Nice shot by our midcourt camera, Peter Doherty. He's trying to get it. Uh, we have a shot of Coach Barrett exhorting his players. This is a critical juncture in the game, John. Quincy's up 11. There's 119 to go. North wants to finish this quarter in single digits. They want the deficit under 10. Quincy wants to try to keep it above 10. Wouldn't mind stretching it up to 14, 15. So, interesting juncture here. Coach Barrett understands that and is getting a timeout. Should also mention coming up on the 14th of January, Wednesday the 14th, we're gonna see the cross time rivals take to the ice at Quincy Youth Arena for the second time this year as the Presidents and Raiders will play. And that game is at 7.50 at the arena. Red Raiders and Presidents hockey action. Ball game comes in here and two points there for Mike Stanton off the inbound pass. Wow. And Costa was trying to hit the ball from behind as Robbie Bina has checked back in. And Costa's going to get called for the foul. Yeah, Matty very, very frustrated. He's been victimized by the same types of plays. He goes out and feels he executed one cleanly and uh, got the call. So Parry open for three, and he gets the friendly roll. He's been close all night on a lot of three-pointers, and he finally gets that one to fall. The officials doing a good job here of just trying to get control of a situation. They can see that the players are getting a little chippy off the ball. Rather than making calls and having the fouls affect the outcome of the game, they're trying to calm players down and get them to keep their composure. Good job by the officiating team here tonight. Crystalini checks in now for North for the first time tonight. He has the ball working against Bina. And it's almost taken away there by Kusi. Coach comes up with it though. Yeah, that was just too long a pass to the wing there. He's gotta be more over to that side of the court if he's gonna throw the ball. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Delaney resets the offense. Five on the shot clock now. And he's gonna get a call there. Bean is gonna get called for the foul. Delaney was going to a tough area on the court and Bina bailed him out with a foul. They gave him a 30 second reset. I don't know if anyone noticed that. I'm not sure that that was correct to do, but. Well, that means North that they want to choose and hold for the last shot. Biden goes up for the shot, gets his own rebound, and he's gonna go to the line for two. They got, uh, looks like they got number three down low, or two zero, maybe it was two zero. Yeah, we're not getting help from the scores table tonight, which is unfortunate. Um. Doug Scott had gone out, to, gone out of the ball game. He's getting ready to check back in for the last 25 seconds. Yeah, Parry, great decision there. We had mentioned that Doug showing some signs of fatigue, which you would expect because of the way he plays the game. Parry got him out for a break defensively and is going to have him in for this final Quincy possession here. Big rebound there by Red. It says, excuse me, as Barden cannot make either foul shot. Doug Scott slowing it down. He's going to play for the last shot. North coming up, almost double teaming Doug Scott. Three seconds to go. Parry open for three. He shoots it, and it is around the rim five times and in. Wow. 
Again, the North focus on number 11. Freed up a shot, and Perry delivers. Two big three-pointers by John Perry here in the fourth quarter. Uh, third quarter, rather. And the Quincy Presidents have taken control of this ball game, John. They now lead by 15, 60 to 45. Doug Scott had 11 points in that quarter, but Jimmy's also working on a triple-double. Doug Scott, six assists and four rebounds. So certainly having a game for himself. Yeah, he's got 39. The rest of the team contributing 21. Well, a big six of that is from John Perry. Perry with two three-pointers here, really uh, coming at a critical point. In that third quarter, thank you, Martin Dunham, our statistician, Quincy outscored North 22 to six. There you see the Quincy girls basketball team. Nice shot of them in the crowd. But a big third quarter as Quincy comes out of the locker room and takes control of this basketball game. This is going to be a big four minutes or so, the start of the fourth quarter for the Red Raiders. Got to show some metal. Got to get themselves back in the game. On the flip side for Quincy, they want to retain control over it. And they're going to start things out by getting the ball to none other than double one, number, well, no, they're not. They're going to try to. Doug Scott, I said, or would have said. Tim Stilley was playing nice defense on Scott, so he had to go elsewhere. And also, Chris Delaney came up with a steal for the Raiders, and they have the ball now. Delaney working against Bean. Coach has a 10 on the shot clock. Nice pass there to Barton, and he puts it up and in. Nice job by Stanton. Nice job by the entire North offense. They showed some pretty good patience there. Scott now working that clock. Oh, he goes right by Stilly. Bean is going to shoot the long three, and it is no good. Barton comes up with the board. I'll tell you what, North Quincy will take that if Quincy keeps it up. There's no reason for Quincy sitting on a 15-point lead to be taking shots like that. And they've got to uh, kind of get their discipline back. Here comes Scott. Parry with the rebound, gives it off to Scott. He's going to come up, drives into them, paying tough shot, no good. Braddock comes up with it, and he tries to put it up, and then he cannot. And fouls called on number 32 of North Delaney. Quincy, Delaney. I'm not sure what he did there, but he got caught in the rebounding action. Brian Malga's going to check back into the ball game for the Presidents. Scott shoots the three, you know, no good off the back of the rim. Stanton with another rebound for North. Yeah, Mike's been very solid rebounding for the Red Raiders. It's been very physical down low, and he's done a good job. Stanton, that was his 10th rebound of the game. Staley in the paint. Shot is no good. Fight for the rebound. And looks like on the line was Andrew Papil for the Presidents. will be North ball. Stanton has it, turnaround jumper against, uh, against Rad, excuse me, no good. Still he can't finish it off, and Scott comes up with it. Scott trying to push the action, and that is no good. Tim Stilly now comes back for North Quincy. And he lost control of that one, it goes out of bounds. Tell you what, both teams just totally out of control here in this fourth quarter. Not what either coach wants to see. And Doug Scott realizes that as well. He's going to slow things down, set up the offense for the Presidents. We're at six minutes to go here in the ball game. North trailing by 13, needs to come up with a stop here. Quincy looking to use the clock a little bit and work their 13-point lead. Good decision by Doug Scott. Eight on the shot clock now. Five on the shot clock. Scott dribbles in just inside the three-point line and hits it. North has put Stilly on Scott. He's got a height advantage. That's going to affect Scott's shooting if he can stay with him. And Stilly's done a pretty good job, but Quincy's setting some more picks for Doug now. 
here in this fourth quarter, John. Delaney with the ball, drives in, passes it off for Stilly. Stilly, nice, nice up fake, and puts it up and in. Great job by Delaney and Stilly. A great finish by Stilly. Stilly was able to get Rats up in the air, went around him, puts it in. Scott at the foul line, shoots it, and gets the roll in. Douglas forgetting about using the clock there. He's a little fired up here, taking on the uh, match with Stilly personally. And die for the rebound. Malger has it, gives it off to Scott. Scott gives it off to Red. He puts it in. And they call the foul. Oh. Quite a flurry here for the Presidents. So Raditz with an opportunity to go to the line. So 66-49. That was the seventh team foul against North Quincy. Got some fresh legs coming in for the Presidents. Yeah, Seth Pullum checks in now. Sticks it. Old fashioned three for Quincy works. And they've got the lead up to 18, John. 67 49. And it's taken away there by Raddatz. Raddatz was trying to get it off to Pullum. No good. And it looks like Pullum's going to commit the foul on Tim Stilly. With four minutes to go, North trailing by 18. They're now in the bonus, however. I'm sure that the coaching staff's gonna talk about taking the ball to the hole. R.J. Barden is down. He took a shot. I see the coaching staff in North a little upset. Um, not quite sure where he got hit, but he took quite a shot. It's in the face here. It looks like they've got his nose. Um, So RJ's time, but I was going to say, John, that it's uh, a point in the game where Quincy, or rather North Quincy, can still claw back if they could get it under 10 with two minutes to go. They're in the ball game. Um, they might do something along the lines of taking the ball to the hoop a lot because when you get to the foul line, the clock's not running, and it's an opportunity for you to, you know, stick some shots without running the time down. From the Quincy perspective. Doug Scott, a couple of possessions ago, you recall, he ran the clock down very well. They used the full 30. We'll look for Quincy to try to sit on this lead. They're up 18. They're in North Quincy's gym. When that's the case, you want to take time off the clock. Be deliberate. And um, we'll see if Quincy doesn't do that here. So North's going to go to the line. Uh, is it Stilly going to the line? I don't even recall. Yeah, I believe Stilly will be going to the line. All right. And North has got to make foul shots. If they want to get back in this game, they're going to have to make foul shots. It's that easy. Well, I want to remind all of our viewers, log on to Quincy Access TV's website at www.qatv.org to find out when this game will be replayed on Quincy Access TV Channel 8. Again, as you see on the screen, qatv.org. I'm sure we'll be getting a lot of requests for this game, Jim. It's been quite a thrilling game here at the North Quincy Gymnasium. This is the first time these teams will meet this year. Uh, they'll also meet up later on in February, February 7th, this time, or not that time, excuse me, at Quincy. Should comment on the outstanding condition of the gymnasium. The place looks great. Um, this has always been a great place to play basketball. Um, the floor is in excellent condition, nicely refinished, looks great on camera. And uh, just a nice venue to play basketball. I've commented, this is a very friendly place to shoot, John. Um, the background is a, a little friendlier with a lower ceiling. When you go to Quincy, it's got the high ceiling and the white paint behind the rims. And it's a very difficult gym if you're not from Quincy High to shoot in. But here, everything's very friendly as Doug Scott has demonstrated. You can come in here and feel very comfortable playing basketball in the North Gym. 
and the presidents have done that. They're all wiping up the floor now. Looks like maybe Ron, or rather RJ, uh, did a little bleeding as well, so. He really got blasted. All right, so while they clean up the floor, a little timeout on the, in the game. 67-49 is our score, Quincy on top. Tim Stilley for North Quincy is gonna go to the line to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Stilley sinks to first. This is what they need to do. They've gotta make their foul shots if they're gonna get back in this shot. And he does just that, Jim, making both of them. Doug Scott working against Still. He's going to go right into the hole and cannot get it to fall. Went around the rim and out. A little surprised by that, as I said. You would think the Quincy, well, nice job by Delaney. Penetrates, he gets the call. He's going to go to the line. You would think the Quincy strategy would be to pull the ball out and work the lead a little. Doug dribble penetrated, went in, missed the layup, and Delaney with a very smart decision coming down and taking it to the hole. This 67-51 uh, with 4.04 to go. We were talking before the game about getting clock cam going here in the gymnasium, but it's a logistically difficult thing to do. All right, Delaney cannot make the first of the one-on-one. -on -one. Duce Cousy has checked in for the presidents. Robbie Bina goes to the bench. Scott with it being pressured by Stilly. Gonna shoot from the corner. Tough shot there, and it is good. That was a two, correct? Yeah, only a two pointer. Nice pass there by Stilly to find Delaney. Goes around, Doug Scott and in. Nice job. Yeah, fouls called by North Quincy and Doug Scott's going to go to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Delaney John is only a junior, but he really plays like a senior. Very smart little play there, he did a good job. Larry is gonna come in here as North Quincy tries to put together a little run with under 3.30 to go. We got 3.21 to go. Quincy leading by 16, and Doug Scott, as you said, is gonna go to the line. He's been money in the bag from the foul line. Yeah, Doug Scott, 45 points, seven assists, and five rebounds, Jim. So certainly a, uh, and a great career for Doug Scott possibly a career night here in this gym against the Crosstown Rivals. Right. It's been just remarkable watching him play. Very exciting. He's very dynamic. Um, he's unselfish, too. If there's a pass to be made, he makes it. But he has been a one-man show tonight. 45 points out of the 69 scored by Quincy. You take him out and put a human being in that spot who gets maybe 10 points even, which most people would be delighted with. And Quincy's in big trouble. But instead, they've got a nice competitive basketball team because they've got you know, 15 guys who will all pour their heart and soul out defensively. They've got some guys who can hit threes, good rebounders, and then this Doug Scott is just absolutely remarkable. It's an interesting team here. They're a group of overachievers, and as we said, I can't emphasize enough, they're a group of kids who were really deflated just before the season started by the loss of their coach. But this coaching staff and these boys have really put together a terrific effort this season. A little pressure by the presidents. Three-point shot there. Actually, there's going to be two points there by Coates. Oh, they gave him they three. They did give him the three. Yep. A 
Looks like a North strategy may be to send anyone whose number is not 11 to the foul <laughs> line here, John. Raddatz got the ball, and boom, they got right on him. They've got to hope Quincy misses their foul shots here. All right, so Raddatz at the line, one-on-one. -on -one. That was the ninth team foul against North. One more, and Quincy will be in a double bonus, shooting two each time. Six to first. And he cannot convert to second. Quickly up now. Nice, nice look for pass. Delaney. And Good he puts job. it in. So North gets a plus one on that exchange. Scott with the ball. Drives into the paint, goes up, and cannot get it to fall. Staley comes away with the rebound for the Raiders. Coach in the corner for three again, and hits it again. And timeout quickly called by Coach Kevin Barrett for the Red Raiders. Well, North with a little 5-1 run. They've cut the lead to 11 with 2.35 to go. I had mentioned that if they can get it to 10 with two minutes, it's reachable. And that's right where they are right now. Um, we're still in a ball game, in other words. This next possession by Quincy is going to be an important one. Well, 2.35 left to go. 72-61 is our score. John and I are getting a little tired, I might say, to our viewers. We've been here since 5 o'clock, and... It is now 8.30, and um, we've been yapping away for a while now. So thank God, John, that this has been such an exciting basketball game. Yeah, it's it certainly really has. It certainly has. So we'll see now if North here, they've, their next, uh, let's see, their next foul against Quincy is going to have Quincy going to the line to shoot two from that point forward. So foul shooting is going to be very important here at the end of this game. Scott gets it in the Raditz, and back to Doug. I'm sure Doug's instructions are to not give up the basketball. Bina has it. North has got to get to the player who's got the ball a lot quicker. They want to get a foul. Scott trying to pass it off and gets it to Raditz, and he goes up and oh, in. Nice job by Raditz. Great reaction by Anthony. Kept his composure under the hoop. And that's a real dagger there, that layup shot. Delaney with the ball. Over to Staley now. Defense! Coates, another three-pointer. That has too much on it off the backboard. And checking into the game, Larry Luzo is going to commit the foul. I think Larry's got a few left in the bank here, so that's one of the reasons why. He's very good around the boards as well. And uh, he wasted no time in fouling Perry when Perry grabbed that rebound. So, North in a tough spot now. They're down 13 with 150 to, to go. Perry sticks the first. Raymond Fang checks in for North Quincy. And Parry misses the second. Stilly with the rebound. Coming up court. Looking for Delaney, and it's saved by him. Staley, he shoots a long three. That's no good. Rebounded by Parry. And it's going to be turned over now. Stilly comes up with it. Parry was trying to get it away. Stilly goes up for two. Nice job by Tim. And North gets a quick timeout after the made hoop so they can set up their pressure. So a 12-point ball game, 75-63, 131 left to go in the game. North trying to get their pressure set up here. They've got, um, got some bodies on the bench who arrested John who could come back in. Maddie Costa, who really put forth a terrific effort. You know, when you're talking about a freshman playing in the North Quincy-Quincy matchup, 
Matt was really impressive. Well, he should have some fresh legs now. You see Mike Stanton over on the bench as well. So they've got a couple of guys. They're giving Terrence Staley a little break, and they're bringing in um, Andy Ng and Raymond Fang are going to be the uh, guards pressuring the ball here defensively. Long baseball pass down court intended nice job by for Fang Scott. And Ng. Taken away, as you said, by Fang and Ng. Still, he shoots the three. He hits, hits it. it. Scott gets tripped up and he falls down. He gets a little shaken up there. Yeah, I think I, Look I like think Doug's tired. You know, took a little break there on his back. That's all that was. All right, so Scott's going to go to the line for two shots. Douglas sticks the first. As we said, North wants to be fouling anyone whose number is not 11 who's wearing blue here. Um, Scott's been perfect since he missed his first foul shot. He sticks both. 49 now for Doug Scott. Crystal Laney shoots the three. And it is no good. And Doug Scott's going to get the ball. It goes off the foot of Liuzzo. The outside official made a correction on the call. Good job. Scott's over there arguing that did go off his foot. North will get the ball, though. Stilly shoots it. No good. Fight for the rebound down low. Liuzzo comes up with it off the glass and in. Good job. And another quick timeout called by North Quincy, 70, excuse me, 77 to 68. Let me ask Martin how many timeouts North Quincy has left. <laughs> Good job, Martin. Martin just looked at me and said, who are you kidding? <laughs> He's done a great job providing us with statistical assistance tonight. We thank him. Peter Doherty and a tired Frank Tansy over on camera for us. Doing a great job. The game, the lead's at nine. Minute to go. Very interesting. Let's see what happens here. It's going to be uh, the the tension in the gym has really increased here, especially when when Doug got tripped there. It's a, it's a real theory activity over on the sidelines. But I believe a technical foul was called, Jim. I'm not exactly I sure. I North called the timeout when they were out of them. That's possible. Quite possible, I, I yeah. Know. Yeah. There has not been a good job of communicating from the scorer's table. Got someone who's sitting over there holding on to the microphone. He enjoys holding it, but we need him to talk into it more and tell us what's up. Scott misses his first foul shot in a heck of a long time there. And misses the second as well. He just lofts it off. No problem there as far as Doug is concerned. And Quincy's going to get the ball. North must have been out of timeouts, John, because that's this is clearly a bench technical that was called. All right, Scott gets the ball right back, though. Slows things down. Yeah, and and they're going to foul him through. again. Yeah. So he's going to get another two shots. All right. I am again out of room on uh, scorekeeping activity in the Doug Scott slot. So... Well, looks like he's statistically evening things out here. That's what this is about. He was 16 for 17, and now he's missed three in a row. There we go. And that was his 50th point on the night as well. Yeah, and he comes away with a steal. Goes up and can't get it to fall. And Scott comes up limping on that one as well. Shot there is no good. Rebounded by Papil. And foul is called. 45 seconds left to go. 
Lead at 10. Papil's going to go to the line for two. Yeah, Scott's limping now. That time he did do something to his leg. But he can take a little break here because it's uh, two foul shots being awarded to Quincy's number 20, Ned Gould. I'm sorry. That's North Quincy's number 20. This is Andrew Papil. Andrew's off for the first. Misses two. Rebound Stilly. Stilly with a rebound, and yeah, he's going to get called for the travel. So 10-point ball game, 78 to 68. That was a tough turnover, though. That was a shot for North, and um, now I'm sure Quincy, yeah, they're going to keep the ball with Scott. And... All right, fouls called on Tim Stilley. Crowd didn't like that one. Yeah, well, I must say, you know, it's unfortunate, but the general atmosphere here tonight has been a whiny one. And I know it's a result of passion about the game, but, you know, there's just been too much whining at the officials here. These are two very experienced and able officials. Called a, a good game all in all. Both teams have some gripes, but you're going to expect that. But uh, there's been too many um, upheld palms and too much whining in my case. I'd like to see it be a little classier presentation when Quincy and North get together. Again, it's a very passionate evening here. And uh, the result of that passion is sometimes some activity that we've observed tonight that you don't like. So you've got to accept that in athletics. But... The boys, for the most part, have conducted themselves very well. Matt Jane checks into the ball game. That was Tim Stilley's fifth foul. Yeah. And so Jane comes in. He takes a three-pointer shot, and that's no good. Stilley played very well tonight. He's very aggressive the whole time. Really worked hard. Did a good job. Here's a guy. Now, this is a perfect example. The best guy on the floor, number 11. He has done nothing but smile at the officials tonight. He's been... Hounded, whacked, harassed. He's taking it all in stride. And meanwhile, he's dropped in 52 points. Not a bad evening for Doug Scott. Quincy has successfully kept the lead in double digits here. And when I, with 30 seconds to go, I'd say that that's probably going to be it for North. I don't see how North, they're going to get Doug Scott out. Round of applause for an outstanding high school ball player who has completed just a phenomenal individual effort. He finished with 53, is that correct? I believe so. Martin's going to double check for us, but and 53 points. you don't see outings like that much in high school basketball. Let me tell you, absolutely remarkable. That's a school record for Quincy High School that's just been announced. So not only does he have the career scoring record, but we just witnessed the highest individual scoring effort by a Quincy High basketball player, Doug Scott. And it's appropriate that that would be a uh, record in his name. All right, well, that is the final buzzer. And the Quincy Presidents come out with a big victory, 81-68 to against North Quincy High School. And there's Doug Scott on your screen right there congratulating the Red Raiders on a well-played game on both teams' part. Yeah, as I said, he is a complete class act. He's a young man who works hard, plays hard, total class the whole time, and um, what a ball game this was tonight. As we said, the gym was filled with passion and um, some good, well-played basketball. So, happy for both programs. I uh, give them uh, credit here. It, they turn this outing into a really competitive one and uh, an exciting one for all of us. All right, real quick, we'll run down the scoring recap. Doug Scott again, 53 points, career uh, school high in game and point score for single game. Anthony Raditz had 12. John Perry had six. Robbie Bina had three. Seth Pullum had two, and Lucas McDonough had two as well. Listen, we pulled Doug Scott over here for one minute. I'd just like to talk to him if I could. 
want to congratulate you, Doug. I don't know if you're aware, but you set a school record for Quincy High School tonight in a ball game with 52 points. I'm sure you feel that way that you scored 52. You look like you're exhausted, but we <laughs> wanted to congratulate you. Thank you very much. I mean, it was, it was a team effort the whole time. I mean, if I didn't have the guys on my team, I wouldn't have been able to have done it. So, I mean, I just I got to thank them and the coaches for putting the game plan together. And it's it's all them, and, and I, just, I just execute it. That's all. Well, we did say that your high school team, you took a tough blow when you lost your coach, and your coaching staff and your teammates and you all deserve a lot of credit for the way you pulled together. And it's terrific that you come into the North Quincy gym tonight and have the outing you did. It was a real pleasure and honor to watch you play basketball tonight. Good thank, work, Douglas. Thank you, thank you. And I just want to say, you know, I love my mom, I love my father, my brothers, and everybody else. So uh, uh, just thank you. It Turn was a great around game. and say hello to Peter Doherty, our cameraman there, all right? Thank Give you. a little wave. <laughs> Make sure you get the video recorder going on tonight's ball game, all right? All right, thank you very Congratulations, much. Congratulations, Doug. All right, well, thank you for that. Barry Welch uh, got a hold of Doug just so we could say hello. Just quite an outing. And you know what's really impressive, John, is there's a lot of people here, both from the north side of the city and from Quincy side, over here to congratulate Doug and give him a little hug. He's just a total class act, as we saw there in that interview. The first thing he talks about is his teammates. Yeah, certainly um, just an overall great performance, one of the uh, best performances the city of Quincy has ever seen. And as we said again, uh, the school record for single points, or games in a single game, Doug Scott there. Real quick, we do want to run down the North Quincy recap as well. Um, overshadowed tonight by having a great game on his own. Tim Stilley had 21 points for North Quincy High School. R.J. Barden had 14. Uh, Jonathan Coates had 11. Also, Mike Stanton had 11. Um, Chris Delaney had four, Matt Costa had three, and Terrence Staley had two. Also, Larry Luzo had two points. So, again, final score here tonight. The Quincy Presidents coming up with a big victory over their crosstown rivals, 81-68. We want to thank all the volunteers who helped out here tonight. Our statistician, Martin Dunham. On camera, Peter Doherty and Frank Tanzi. On audio, Paul Biller. Graphics, Michael Jarvie. Our engineer, Chris Potter. Our director, George Capadonna. So again, final score here, 81-68. Quincy comes out on top. For Jim Timmons, my name is Jonathan Clary. We want to thank you for watching this edition of QATV Sports. We'll see you next time.